Hey, it's Friday, and you know what that means. It's Family Friday. My oldest child is named Simeon. He's 19 years old and for the last several months he's been out of the country in Africa. Now he's back in the U.S. and we haven't had a chance to catch up with him. It's kind of weird because he's back in the U.S. but he's not yet back at our home. He's still in Texas and so we're going to meet with him over Skype tonight. He's been on the mission field in Africa for the last couple months. Um, and we've been seeing a few email updates, but he's not been uh, he's not had a lot of an internet connection So we're really excited to hear some of his testimonies and we just thought it might be fun for you um, To join in with us and catching up a little bit on what God has been doing around the world and we're all kind of sitting around Because he's about 10 minutes late. He said he opened his computer and he's having a hard time getting it getting it to function so we're waiting patiently hmm. Hurry up. we're all waiting some of us are waiting patiently some, some not so patient <laughs> there he is let's see hey there's dad with his vlog yeah how's it going buddy <laughs> never ending <laughs> he got a haircut i did get a haircut you look tan they were all calm and everything and then like two minutes before we connected Somebody said something funny to the other one, and they're like snorting like pigs and think they're. Well, I was so snorting. No, I was snorting, and you're like. Uh, some of the cool stuff that happened in Uganda is um, a witch got saved was probably the one of the biggest highlights. There's a lot of like <coughs> witchcraft and sorcery and things like that, and and before you know, it's like everybody except for me is sick. Now, Han now um, Hannah, another member of our team, wasn't really sick, but she. Is just very weak. Mm -hmm. She wasn't very hydrated, so she wasn't feeling very, feeling very well. And we were doing a lot of door to door, like hiking around, evangelizing. Um, and so we started out that afternoon that the witch got saved. And, um, she actually <laughs> she couldn't go along. She was just feeling too weak, mm -hmm. so she stayed back. So I was the only one that did evangelism that day out of our my, our entire team. And uh, yeah, so we went. We did some evangelism and then it started looking rainy to the uh, end of the afternoon and we had we were going to stop by that witch's uh, house to speak with her, to preach to her and, uh, one more time. And then, so yeah, it started raining so I preached the gospel to her and um, some local pastors were with me and they interpreted what I said and then uh, the local pastor there started um, preaching the gospel again to her. Uh, and then uh, she got saved, and then we prayed for her because she had some physical issues going on, some like sicknesses and things. So we prayed for her, and then uh, at the end of our time in the East, we came back, and she said that she was actually experiencing some improvement in her body. That time, uh, they followed up with her, and they said she had stopped burning incense. So, or was, yeah, was dealing with that. So awesome. Yeah. So yeah, so she got saved. And then I also had, uh, also while we were out east, the local pastor there had a weekly uh, Saturday afternoon hour-long uh, radio program uh, that he was on, that he uh, that he bought airtime on a very popular radio station. And so me and Phil, our team leader, uh, went there and I uh, spoke on the radio show for an hour. And that was how long it was to thousands of different people. I was able to preach the gospel. Cool. To thousands of different people on on the radio for over an hour. Awesome. It was okay. Live. It was live. It was live. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it was like Christians, Muslims, sorcerers, like thousands of different people all over that region of Uganda. It was awesome. a very popular radio station. So I was like, wow, I was really humble. Uh, one of the times we were on evangelizing, one of the first times, uh, uh, there was like this is like the second or third house, and there was a girl who was. I, I was preaching to this grandma, and then there was also a girl with her. And I finished preaching to the grandma, and I turned around, and the local pastor that had gone with us uh, was actually praying for this uh, young lady, and she was starting to convulse, and I knew she was manifesting, so I just jumped in, really. Mm -hmm. It kind of already started the process. Mm -hmm. I just jumped in, and about five minutes later, uh, the 
that that girl was set free. And the funny thing was, is Noel, one of the members on our team, who's a pastor's pastor's kid, uh, that was the, her first time ever seeing a demon cast out of someone. Wow. And everybody had fin everybody had finished. Apparently, everybody had been set free or something. But one girl, there was no one in the room. There was no one ministering to her. She was just laying on the ground, just kind of moaning. Mm. No pastors were in there. The room was empty. It was just her. Mm. She, she wasn't set free. I'm like, well, that isn't right. You don't get them all set free except for oh, one nice. and then leave. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not right. So, I but I, I jumped in there and uh, the, almost the rest, all the rest of my team was watching except for Phil and Emily. Okay. Um, so all the students, John, Noel, and Hannah were all watching me, and I just jumped in and just within. It felt longer for me because it was very spiritually intense. Yeah. But I just, yeah. I just went after it, and uh, I set her free without a translator. <laughs> Both <laughs> yeah. times without a translator, and uh, oh, God set her free. Excuse me. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, she was set free within five minutes. It felt longer for me, but she was set free, and that was the first time any of them, uh, not Noel, but. John and Hannah had ever seen it personally, and mm -hmm. so it was kind of cool. So that that was those two experiences. Cool. Frankly, it's funny. Mission teams don't go over to Uganda with the mindset to heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons. They go with the mindset of let's help the orphans, do kids programs, and probably a little more evangel evangelism. Maybe a little more evangelistic, yeah. Maybe teaching, yeah, mm -hmm. which isn't bad. It's right. just. Not it's all, just different. but it's not all. Well, the it's funny needed. thing is, if they went over there to heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons, All they'd, that have, stuff they'd, would have, happen. they'd have the oh, best yeah. evangelism, best children's program <laughs> that, they, they best done, yeah. Yeah, that they'd ever seen. There's a verse in the Bible that says, I have no greater joy than to see my children walking in the truth. It was never our goal just to keep our children off of the streets and off drugs. It was always our goal to raise up children that would follow Jesus and walk like him. In these days of extreme darkness, it's not enough to be on the defense trying to keep our children away from what's dark. We have to raise them up to be children of the light who will shine. And when they do, God gets all the glory. If you're enjoying these full speed blogs, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Thanks a lot. She did. Hold on just a second, I got a pitch. Yeah. Don't, don't tell us where you're scratching. Nice booger. On my leg, around my ankle. Uh, the three little amigos.